In this video we are going to take a look at the new features included in the Power BI Designer February 2015 update. There are quite a few new improvements in this release. The first group of improvements is about performance. We have improved uh, performance in the Power BI Designer in two different areas. The first one is query load where you will see your uh, queries taking about a half or a third of the time that they used to take in previous updates. And the second area is Excel workbook import. You will notice how the latency in retrieving previews for Excel workbook objects is much shorter. Therefore, it will be easier for you to connect to these workbooks and uh, start previewing them so that you can apply transformations. We have several other performance improvements coming in the next few months, in the next few updates, so stay tuned for those as well. The second area is a new connector. Uh, we are adding a new connector for Dynamic CRM Online. Let's take a look at uh, how it can be accessed from the Power BI Designer. I'll start from the Getting Started dialog. I'll click Get Data. And the new connector is under Dynamic CRM Online. Alternatively, you can also search for it and it will just show it in the list on the right. Once we specify that we would like to connect to Dynamic CRM Online, we are presented with the following dialog. Uh, where there's a couple of things that are uh, interesting to call out. The first one is the example of a URL. Uh, that uh, This is how the URL that you provide for your Dynamic CRM online feed will have to look like. If you provide something different, for instance, powerbi.com, you will see how uh, we present you with an error and we will disable the OK button so that we don't let you connect to an invalid um, URL. Now let's specify something that will actually work. You see how in this case I don't get any error indication, so I'm good to go. I'll click OK. The next thing we need to specify are the credentials to connect to our Dynamic CRM instance. We will need to use organizational account, the last option on the left, and uh, sign in with our identity. After we're signing in, we can click Connect. And now um, the Power BI Designer will connect to CRM and it will start retrieving all of the tables and entities that are available to us so that we can start importing data and building our reports. We will perform all of these selections within the Navigator dialog which is uh, the next area of improvements. Um, you will see a few improvements in the Navigator dialog in this release. The first one that you may notice is below the search box, there is no longer a checkbox to specify whether to select multiple items or not. Uh, and by default, what we will do is always let you select multiple items. The second thing that we've improved is the ability to search for a specific items. So for instance, if I type incident resolution set, I'm presented with a preview and I can select the item and uh, then I can clear the box and you see how we return to the full list of items in the tree but we keep the position where you were at therefore we don't jump our up or down in the list. Now the next improvement that you can see in the Navigator dialog are these two tabs for Show All and Show Selected which will downsize the list to the specific items that I've selected and this will move us away from using a selection well as uh, we used to have at the bottom left corner of the Navigator. This new layout improves or increases the amount of items that we can show on the left side uh, for multi-selection mode because we don't need to no longer show an area at the bottom left uh, for the selection well. And um, all right, so now that I've selected this table, I'm going to go ahead and click Edit Query. Uh, this will load the table into the query view. It will load the preview of this table into the query view. And uh, here I can apply transformations just as if it was any other uh, data source in Power BI Designer. So for instance, let's go ahead and pick a few columns. Let's pick Activity ID. Uh, let's pick Description. 
and let's also pick um, activity parties. Now we can uh, remove other columns. Let's go ahead and move the activity ID to the far right to the end of the table. Alright, so now we're ready to take a look at the next uh, group of improvements in this release, uh, number four here on the list. We've added a couple new transformations. Uh, the first group are two new transformations for date time columns, uh, which will let us calculate the age and also do subtraction between those two date time columns. Let's start with the date. For instance, we can select create it on for each of these incidents and we can uh, go into add column. We go under date and you see how we find the first option being age. Once we do that, we insert this new column that will give us the age, uh, which is basically the difference between that specific column, the, the values in that specific columns, compared to the current date. And of course, this will recalculate as you uh, refresh your query, so the, the notion of now will always be kept up to date. Now we can transform this uh, because it's a duration. We can turn this, for instance, into uh, the number of days you see how the average age is about 453 days. It's uh, over a year old, each of these incidents. Now the second type of transformation is uh, date subtraction. So in this case I can select modified and created dates and uh, within add column I could select date subtract. This will calculate the difference between them uh, and we can of course turn this into something like uh, total hours. So we'll see how we took uh, sometime between 26 hours and 103 hours to respond to each of these incidents. Now the last transformation that we introduce in this update is the ability to uh, control whether to use a column name prefix or not for new columns in aggregate. Um, so if I go into the expand and aggregate menu you will see that within expand we have this option to use original column name as prefix. This has been there for a few uh, months uh, but what we just added is the same option for aggregate. So for instance, if I pick count of party ID and I keep this uh, column name prefix, which is the default behavior in previous updates, you would get something like this new column name, co count of, and then we use uh, the old name column, incident resolution activity parties, as the prefix. Uh, however, if you were to use this new option that we provided in this update to disable the prefix, you will see how the name is now just count of party ID. Uh, this will definitely make it easier for you to control the name without having to manually rename these columns. And with that, we are ready to transition into the report view. Um, and this will be the place where we will show the last few uh, remaining new features in this update. You'll see how we've done a few improvements to the field list and also uh, improvements to the navigation uh, or to the, uh, the way you navigate uh, within the pages in the left pane. Within the field list we've done a few things. The first one is the ability to expand collapse tables and the ability to hide and uh, unhide uh, fields within the field list. And we've also done some uh, optimization of the layout in terms of the margins and spacing and fonts. So let's go back to the designer and take a look. Uh, my query just finished loading. Uh, so the first one, as I was mentioning, was the ability to expand and collapse uh, the uh, table nodes. This is very helpful when you're working with several tables as it will help you navigate easier. Now the second one is the ability to hide each of the fields uh, within the field list. So for instance, I'm going to hide created on and I could also hide subject. Now this will make it easier for me to just reduce the number of items that I'm looking at and these might be fields that I am using within my report but I don't want to have visible all the time so I could hide them and I also have the ability to view hidden fields. This is a, a setting and you see how the hidden fields are kind of uh, in a lighter gray color and of course I can then unhide them individually or I could also do unhide all to show them all back uh, by default. Now the other area of improvements as I was mentioning was the ability to use keyboard shortcuts for navigating new pages or for navigating pages. So not just uh, arrow down or arrow up as I'm doing right now but also page down and page up. And uh, finally we also support pressing the end key to go to the last slide and pressing the home key to go back to the first slide. 
Finally, we have also performed uh, lots of bug fixes and uh, we fixed a lot of issues that you reported to us via frowns. Um, we would like to thank you for all of your feedback on our preview and uh, ask you to continue sending it over. It's really valuable for us, not just for um, bug fixes and uh, quality improvements, but also because it will help us understand better what different features you would need uh, and uh, that will help us drive our priorities. Uh, we hope that you enjoy a lot this Power BI Designer update from February and uh, please uh, keep your feedback coming and stay tuned for future updates in the upcoming months. Mm -hmm.